Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk all about food, glorious food. If you're a person who, like me, me uh, likes to eat, then uh, this video is uh, pretty in important information for you. I've uh, done some recent videos about all the storms uh, that have been tracking across the U.S. We've had a very, very powerful um, and persistent dry line running running up. Uh, so we've got the Gulf of Mexico, warm humid air coming in here. We've got dry desert air coming across. There's a line where the humidity varies tremendously across it. And then that combined with the cold air coming down through the persistent trough of the jet stream creates all of these temperature imbalances. So you get basically huge frontal storm systems forming. So we're uh, approaching, I think approaching something like uh, almost a thousand tornadoes in the last uh, number of weeks and things like that, uh, at least tornado warnings. But, you know, we've had tremendous amounts of rainfall and this rain is just sitting on the Midwest and it's really delayed the planting of corn, wheat, soy, things like that. What the fields that have been planted um, it's been cloudy and, and too rainy, not enough sun. So, so those crops aren't really growing that well. So I'm going to talk about all of these things. It's not just the U.S. food growth uh, agricultural industry that's being affected at the moment. We have uh, some conditions in Canada that are too dry, which are not uh, good for growing the wheats and grains. Australia has just had a massive uh, you know, heat wave and drought. And their their uh, wheat supply uh, pretty much was horrible, so they had to import wheat for the first time in many decades from Canada. It's too wet in Europe, and uh, so a lot of the vegetables and crops there are not being planted. There's a uh, there's some pests going through in China that are having big effects on their agricultural production. So when you add all these pieces together you get a clear picture that um, we can expect food price uh, spikes uh, and, and uh, you know, soon. And there's nothing like food prices um, or lack of food to get people out onto the streets to protest. So let me get right into the details of what's going on in the US. Okay, I'll uh, get back to this plot um, shortly. Okay, so this is uh, just a reminder, paulbeckwith.net, you know, check out my site and you can search for blogs for any specific topics that you want. Um, thank you to everybody who's made a donation to me through PayPal. I really rely on these donations to, to uh, get, get this work out to you, um, to do all these videos and, you know, it takes a lot of time and get the information out to you. Okay, so no plant 19. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is my this is my overall uh, Twitter feed. Um, lots of stuff on here. Um, and, uh, you know, lately, I've been focusing a lot on the uh, food. Um, that's the feed. And this is my actual um, uh, my actual personal one, uh, Paul H. at Paul H. Beckwith. Please follow me on Twitter if you're not, and I do follow most people back. So this is an idea of some of the storms that have been crossing the um, U.S. for May 2019. Okay, so we start at the beginning of May, and we just cycle across, and this is the radar images. So, you know, the big storms are in the red, of course, the tracks moving across. So this runs from May 1st to May 28th. Um, let me see if I can just expand it here. There we go. That's a bit better. So May 1st to May 28th. And it's the reflectivity images from the NEXRAD radar system. And you can see, you know, there's been tremendous amounts of numbers of storms crossing bringing tornadoes, bringing high winds, extreme weather events, and also, you know, deluges of rain. So 
this rain sitting on the field. Um, there's no difference in this pattern from the pattern in the winter. There was a strong trough coming down, so we had a very cold winter, lots of snow. So not only with the snow melting, we've now been having tremendous amounts of, of rainfall. Um, this is a great article to start off, uh, which I'll talk about, EcoWatch. Climate crisis brings historic delay to planting season, pressuring farmers. Um, and this is the plot here. The USDA announced that 58% of the U.S. corn crop has been planted as of May 26, compared to the five-year average pace of 90%. There should be 90% planted by now, and there's only 58%. So this is the slowest pace in recorded history. And I'll go to some of these hashtags, no plant 19, plant 19, hashtag corn, hashtag soy, hashtag food, you know, and we'll look at some of these other things. This is a number of tornado warnings um, since the morning of May 15th. So look at, th this is the location of all the tornado warnings. It's been an incredibly active period because there's all of these frontal systems coming across with large temperature difference, so lots of warm air being lifted up by cold fronts passing through, you know, and combined with the dry line features and the drop, the jet stream trough dropping very sharply, it's just uh, perfect conditions for, 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 for massive storms. And this is a drone video of an EF, where an EF4 went through, I mean, just tremendous damage. Um, okay, so let's now focus on, let's look at this article, Cl Climate Crisis Brings Historic Delay to Planting Season, Pressuring Farmers and Food Prices. So um, the, it's been dismal. The spring planting season has been dismal due to the climate, due to climate change, um, climate crisis. Damaging storms and flooding are making fields from Oklahoma to Arkansas impossible to sow. So driving grain prices are being driven up in the futures market in a way that could have devastating consequences. <clears throat> Lower yield of corn and soybeans is jacking up prices for the staple <clears throat> cereals. Okay, and this could lead to a ripple effect. Um, if farmers don't meet planting deadlines, um, they can lose their their, uh, they won't be insured. They can lose their crop insurance. Most of this trigger is in late May and early June, and we're already, you know, we're almost into June. Okay, so farmers still have 116 million acres of combined corn and soybeans left to plant. As of May 19th, far more than they ever had on that date. The previous high was 91 million acres. Okay, so this is the this corn and soybean acres left to plant. This was on May May nineteenth was when the data was taken. I could see an updated chart. So, you know, this is uh, sixty, eighty, a hundred, hundred and twenty. So, a hundred and sixteen million acres left to plant. That was twenty nineteen. The previous record was ninety one in nineteen ninety five. And you can see here the mean is sixty. And uh, you know many years were better, and uh, you know but we're 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 in new territory here. I mean, we're basically in new tor new territory. Um, floods aren't just getting more frequent; they're more powerful. Um, so, the statistics of these hyd hydrologic events, so-called hundred-year floods, hitting twenty watersheds in the Midwest and Great Lakes region, will increase by as much as thirty percent by the end of the century. This is a a climate study, <clears throat> but you know we're obviously seeing this now. Um, this is the um, I showed you this kind of map of some of these storms and things. This one here is showing the last. This is valid on May twenty eighth. It's showing the last seven day observed precipitation. Um, presumably, this is in inches. Yes, so it shows you. You know, look at all of this rain in these areas, and these are in vital areas for growing food. Um, you know, farmers are tweeting out on using various hashtags, crop watch 19, hashtag soybeans. Um, this is, uh, here's where soybeans will be planted in central Kansas is it, if, it, if it ever dries out. I mean, it's like lakes have appeared where lakes should not be. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> you know, there's many, many images and pictures of farmers' fields and uh, 
You know, corn planting's off 38.9%. Illinois had 95% of its corn and 79% of its soybeans in the ground at this time last year. This year it's only 24% and 9%. Um, okay, so there's lots of information there. So let's go and look at uh, on Twitter now. So this is under the hashtag. If you go on Twitter and look at the hashtag, no plant 19 okay, um, 38 new results since I brought this site up. I mean, it's very active, but let's look at this thread here. Okay, um, <clears throat> after multiple years of relatively problem-free global crop, crop production on a large scale, there's three stories developing simultaneous. No plant 19 in the entire corn belt of the U.S., developing drought in Canada uh, for wheat, mostly hot and dry conditions developing in China. Let's add number four, a crop-eating pest is threatening China's food supply. A rapidly spreading pest is threatening to further ravage China's domestic food security within the next two months. Okay, we'll add a couple more. Hot and dry in the southeast U.S. is already doing significant crop damage. Continued long-duration drought in parts of Australia. Drought and heat waves. They had to act import uh, wheat from Canada for the first time in many, many decades. Okay, I've done videos in the past showing some of the wheat producing regions of Australia actually being pushed right off the continent, you know, with changing uh, weather conditions. Hot and dry conditions developing in major growing areas of Russia and the Ukraine. So this is showing, this is showing the percent of normal precipitation. And the, there's these areas here which are only, um, they only had 20%, 20% of their normal precipitation, 40% to here, 60%, you know, 80%. All of these areas are less rainfall than normal. <clears throat> okay, so this is obviously having a, a big impact on, on crops in Russia. Um, so all of these things are combining, are conspiring. Uh, when you get simultaneous problems in food growing supply around the world, then obviously prices are going to Skype, uh, spike up. Okay, um, I showed you this plot here. This is the corn crop. Um, you know, there's, uh, here's the corn progress. Now, when the corn is being planted, what is, it's not growing basically. So this is U.S. corn progress. This is the percent emerged. of. Uh, so they plant the seeds, and then the seeds are emerging. And this is the, as of May 26, this is the percent emerged. And the, the, in brackets, it's the change from the five-year average. So emerged and the change from the five-year average. So what you can see is, you know, down 29%, 37%, 49, 55, 64, the dark areas. Okay, so, and, and these are down just a few percent. So the corn that has been planted in the U.S. is not growing anywhere near like it should be, like, like it's way, way down in terms of growth compared to previous years. Um, this is... Uh, Another image, this, this is showing, comparing week 20 in 2019 versus 2018, corn acres left to plant. So look at Illinois. They've just, they planted this, and they should be planting 8.5 million acres, and they planted 440,000. You know, Indiana, South Dakota, Iowa, Ohio, you know, this is a simultaneous across many states, um, growing uh, catastrophe, you know, not being able to plant. Um, the, so yields are obviously going to be devastated this year compared to previous years. You know, this is, uh, you know, farmers just, um, tweeting, strangest spring I ever did see. Taken this morning, today's final plant date in North Dakota, I'm 50% planted. Okay, um... 90% plus of the fields currently are untouched in 2019. The few corn fields that are planted are in bad shape with standing water. Usually we are 90% done by now with corn and beans. You know, so the fields are just saturated with water. Pretty much sums up no plant 19. You know, really heavy, heavy rains. 
and this is the um, you know you can just go go yourself to No Plant Nineteen and have a look at these images. You know it's very very clear what's happening. I'll continue this in a second video. Thank you for listening.